All right, welcome back to the shop. Um, today we're gonna go over the CTIS system on one of these growlers, uh, an M1161. Uh, we're not actually going over the whole system, but we're going over how to hopefully fix a problem. Actually, if you see this video, that is how you fix the problem. If it doesn't fix a problem, then this video will go in the trash. Um, so ITV number 49, um, you guys have seen this in other videos. It's been here for a while. It was just on standby, the guy I was working on it for. Uh, so just get it in your own time, you know, no rush. But then he sold it to someone. So it's heading off to Tennessee as soon as I'm done. The central tire inflation system started screwing up and it was just kind of puking air out the exhaust muffler on it. So we threw it up on the lift. This, this is a different one here. This is a ITV 111. But just to show you where this valve is located, you drop the main pan and then uh, right down here is the valve. It's located right above the uh, yoke for the rear drive shaft. Kind of a pain in the butt to get out. I don't know, Royce pulled it out, so. It's not fun. Yeah, not fun. It's, it's a pain. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we took it out and it's on the back of my truck right now. And we're gonna, I did kind of pre-take it apart just to kind of see what's inside. So there aren't any really weird surprises uh, when I film. Um, so basically I'll pull it apart again and kind of show you what we find inside. And then we'll put it, put it back together, um, you know, how we should, lubricating the seals and all that stuff. And then we're gonna put it back in the in the growler and see if it works. So if you see this video, it worked. Okay, so here's a close-up of the valve. Here's the bottom. This is the part that you see when you're underneath the growler. And here's the air muffler. It's got a screen in there right here. It's got a screen around the sides. And it's just the exhaust port. Um, I know some of these are actually considered a muffler. I thought this would have been, but it's really just a screen. Um, I don't know if you could actually buy a better muffler to make it quieter. I know on the iQ updates, they move this. They don't mount it here anymore. They run a hose. And actually, let's walk over to... Does that one have it? Okay. So on the 1163, they run it up to here. They put a smaller... It's a little bit smaller when you can see the diameter size. It's not that, it doesn't need to be this big, really. I mean, how much air comes through it, this is fine. But they run it up here so you don't get the debris in it. You don't get the water in it, you don't get the sand and that stuff in it. And also when they do it on the, on the 1161s, uh, they just mount it up there by the, by the batteries up in the back. But anyways, uh, let's, take it, let's take this apart. There's the camera. Okay, first not to get it apart, we just pull this, make it easier. We'll just pull this nut off. Slide the, the, the coil off of here. That stays on. A couple sockets. We need an eight, eight millimeter to pull this bolt out. Get that bolt out. Then we switch over to a 13 or a half inch. So we'll pull the top off here first. Got this brass cap. Uh, there's no seals or nothing. Um, but we'll blow this out just to make sure because where that coil goes on here, this is actually a valve. There's a spring-loaded valve in here that that coil magnetically opens and closes. We'll double check that to make sure the passage isn't, isn't plugged. Got this spring that sits on top. And then there's this diaphragm. Diaphragm's nice and pliable. Um, when I first took it apart, I had a bunch of kind of debris kind of stuff like there's a piece laying right in there uh, there was a lot of sand like this kind of brown light brown orange sand in there and I already checked that orifice it has it's clear so those are two things you want to check and then if you flip it over you'll just see the ports and stuff in there so you can just take uh, compressed air blow all this out really good set that aside and we come to this side which has the manifold part it's got an o-ring here which you could tell had some o-ring sealing on it before. It's kind of crusty. There's an o-ring right around here that kind of weird looking. It's a little wonky looking like maybe it was pooched out of there. And we'll take and reseal that. There's another one right here. So we pull this out. And actually there was a part here that I forgot to put in when I reassembled it before the video, but this sits in here like that. And that holds a check valve down. So we pull this out. There's a conical shaped spring in here the small end of the spring goes onto the ball because otherwise if you put the big end in first it would it wouldn't push on the ball correctly 
So when you put it back together, the, the small end goes in first. And then there's a check ball in there. And that goes to this port here. And I, I'm not sure which port's which. Um, I think these all go to the wheels. It makes sense because they're all the same size. And this would be your air supply. So basically, I'm just there was a lot more dirt in here when I first took it apart. I'm just going to blow it all out. Um, we'll clean it out real good. And then I'm going to put o-ring sealant on all these o-rings when I put it back together. I've got this stuff from Midland. Um, I don't know if you can buy this stuff directly. It comes with kits for rebuilding air brake valves on like uh, semi trucks. I just happen to have a lot of it from stuff we used to do. But any kind of a silicone base or kind of grease like that, um, that won't dry out real quickly is what you want to use on those seals. So here's those two ports in here for that valve. So I'm blowing through there. I can feel the air blowing through it. So I know that's not plugged up. I can feel it blown through. I blew through the rest of it really good. Kind of just cleaned out all the ports. Blew through here. Um, I, I just have to blow this one out. And then we can uh, lube it up and reinstall it. All right, so we're putting it together and this, this center o-ring just didn't fit on there right it's it's really deformed and stuff like that and it's kind of stretched in there and i kind of wondered if that's the one that was leaking because if you can see on the camera there how much there's like a gap around there it's not fitting good and where that mates it just mates on here so there's no shoulder for it to kind of hold it in place so i went digging through a caterpillar o-ring kit i have and i found an o-ring that looks like it's going to fit really nice in there so we're just gonna go that route since I doubt I can go down to Napa and buy a seal kit for this thing. It fits really nice. It's got extra, it fits snugly. It's got extra rubber sticking up. This big seal is really good. It's got a lot of rubber to it, a lot of balance on it still. This small one here was, was really jacked looking. It was really smashed up and had some grooves in it. So I found another seal here in my cat kit. Fits in there real nice. This other one here, I lost it. Don't tell anybody. Uh, so I found another one in my truck that fits it. You know, no ring kit I have just for some old hydraulic valves and stuff. So there we go. We have all new seals in there. Um, so I gotta get this oriented which way this fits. We need to put the check ball and the spring in there. I think I'm gonna lube up the check ball just a little bit too. So the check ball drops in that hole. The spring goes down small side down it's just fits right in here pushes down against it goes into that spring and pushes down on the check ball and then what we need to do is before we do that we'll take this i'm actually going to put some lubricant on this diaphragm too just to help it seal better just on the edges and this stuff kind of helps the rubber too like conditions it a little bit so that kind of pops back down in that hole the spring's going to go in there before the cap goes on. Okay, so when we put this together, we can see where the holes line up. We got the two ports. It's going to go on top of here. Go and check it, make sure I don't push the seal off that center post. It's going to hold that in place. The spring's going to go in the diaphragm. We want to make sure we, the diaphragm's good so she doesn't get pregnant because you wouldn't want that. I know a guy in high school wants. All right, so that goes on there. These bolts in here. To, and then we have to, gonna have to double check this. Make sure, I, make sure that little brass thing's in the right place. The o rings, yes, they all look good. Set that on there. Start these bolts. This is where being born with three hands helps. Come on. And just run these in. Don't want to tighten them too tight with the impact. Because we this thing's all aluminum, we don't want to break anything or strip it. I'll hand tighten those later. Um, then this bolt goes in this hole. Okay, now I got it started. Get snug these. Put 
that. And then this coil goes back over the valve. Put the washer on. And then when you tighten this up, you just want to snug it. Um, just so this thing doesn't move around. And if it's in the way when you go to put it back in, you can loosen it. In fact, I'll put it like that, but I'll wait till I tighten these up and then I'll put that like that before I snug it. I think that's what, that way it'll be out of the way. This can rotate anywhere it wants to. It's just a magnetic coil that actuates that valve. So, and that's it. We'll put it back in. We'll put the muffler back on. I'll blow that out and then we'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so we took the, the air manifold and the controller off of, uh, off of here for the CTIS system went through it we resealed it that wasn't the problem it did need to be resealed obviously those seals were in bad shape so we started looking at this thing and you know we hook up shop air to these things so we don't have to run the compressor the whole time we've got air charging through we've got one tire that's at zero psi we've got the other three are at 48 and we can just hear air flowing and flowing and it's coming out it sounds like it's coming out of the manifold so we started unhooking wheel regulators to see if we can uh, isolate it and then we're walking around looking and what it is, between the seats, there's a square part of the frame, or like rectangle part of the frame. And I've shown it in other videos where there's an air drain cock on the bottom. That air tank gets air to supply the, the tire inflation system. This protection valve right here makes sure that you get air in this tank, which this tank would control the air suspension and probably the locks with steering. Can't verify that without looking. Uh, but then this sends air to that tank, which is part of the frame. It's a built-in part of the frame. And this makes sure that that tank has air all the time, priority over this. So if you get, if, if a hole blows in this tank or another part of the air system blows out and you're losing air, it's still gonna prioritize air to go to that tank so the tire inflation system has a supply of air to work. Um, Okay, so we started feeling, we're feeling around looking at it, and we started feeling air coming out over here from under the tunnel. So we pulled the center plate off here. I could feel air coming out of the center plate. So we pulled the tunnel off, and here's what we found. Both the airlines, the airlines going to, the, both the front wheels were unplugged. They were just laying in here. So air was just blowing out of these two quick connect fittings here. Um, so we just stuck one on just to verify which one goes to the, to the left and the right. So this would be the driver's side, you know, the port side. This would be the passenger, the starboard side. So all we have to do is connect those back up and that's it. No idea why somebody unplugged those. Um, somebody had the tunnel off and unplugged them. We don't know why. Okay, and then here's, here's one of the, I just dropped the part. Here's one of the wheel regulators. And you can see inside there, you can see all the sand inside. So if you do have a problem with one wheel in particular having issues, um, don't be afraid to pull this apart. There's just four screws that hold that on. Well, this one broke a screw, but you know, there's four screws that hold it on and it's just this diaphragm inside. And just make sure it's clean, clean it out. Make sure this, it's all sealed up good and then you won't have any problems with that. So there's a spring also that holds that diaphragm down. So if you look at the display here, we're getting a fault for, it'll come up again here, CF. That stands for constant flow. And that was because these lines were unhooked, so it had a constant flow of air. So if you have a broken regulator or a flat tire, a tire with a big hole in it, you're going to get that constant flow, um, you know, warning on here. Okay, well that did it. We put those hoses back on and we tested the system. We aired them up to 50 pounds. I think it's 50 pounds for the uh, highway height or highway pressure. And then we lowered it back down to kneeling and they, you could hear the air puking out of the system. We fill them back up. So that's it. That fixed it. Um, so I hope that helps any of you guys if you're troubleshooting a problem you have with yours. And um, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button. Um, if you like the video, even if you didn't like the video, hit like because, I don't know, it's just cool to see people hit the like button, I guess. But anyways, thanks for watching um, and have a good day.